I'm Duncan Barnes, and firstly, a thank you for taking the time to join us today. I'm joined with Jimmy Bourne, Partner Technical Specialist for MTR. We're going to spend the next 30 minutes with you in terms of how do we reset the return to office. We had a space now as we move forward as to what we need to be doing and who better to spend the next 20 minutes with, with Jimmy Bourne around how are we going to do this. Jimmy, do you want to share something with the audience? I think Ignite has been spectacular so far, Duncan. I'm so excited for everything that we announced. I'm so excited for the partnership between Poly and Microsoft. I, I can't wait to get the next half hour and just start to share about how the return to office is, how everybody's looking at this, and some of the keys that we at Microsoft and you guys at Poly have been sort of talking about and sort of educating people about to sort of think about how do we actually return back to the office? Yeah, this is going to be exciting, and I'm super excited to be here. So let me just jump straight ahead. You've got me all revved up here. Yeah. One of the things I want to spend a short period of time, and I'm definitely not going to dive deep into this, is the post-pandemic impacts, right? I'm just going to use that as the leading path into the conversation that we're going to be covering. And that is understanding what the current state of the business looks like, but then also future looking in terms of what the proposed solution should be in terms of how we address this return back to the office. So we've covered the agenda, let's dive straight into this. And I'm gonna share with everybody where we are in terms of how I saw and how people have seen this post pandemic. So Jimmy, feel free to chime in. But three key elements sit out for me in terms of what this meant for post pandemic. One is great resignation, man, that impacted everybody. Now, what we've seen with the great resignation is we've seen this massive loss of in-house skills. People left the organizations that they were working with they had years of experience with them, and they've shifted over that into a new organization that they've moved to. That opened up net opportunity for uh, system integrators, for partners, for people like ourselves as Poly, where we needed to come in and be an advisor to organizations as they think about what is this uh, world look like in terms of the next step, the next phase for us. And the output of that is we've seen, based on those three elements, there's a stop-go mentality in terms of returning to the office. It's almost like slight hesitation, what I need to do to make this attractive. Are you seeing the same on your side, uh, Jimmy? I think it's incredible what we've seen. We've seen some organizations say, I have to go back to the office full time. And many organizations, while they want to do that, you've got to stop and think, is that the most effective way of actually bringing my workforce back to the office? Because I think a lot of the studies that we've commissioned, Duncan, here at Microsoft, and even Satya himself, has started to sort of think of the office as a tool. And the office is a tool that you can use with your workforce. And I think we're going to go into it a little bit later. But if you look at that tool, how is my tool outfitted currently? Duncan, I, I, we have a statistic that 8% of meeting rooms are right now uh, uh, video enabled with their capabilities. If 8% of, of, of meeting rooms are, are video enabled, that means nine out of 10 rooms are available for our partners to go in because we know not everybody's going back to the office, even though some leadership is saying everybody needs to come back. I think what you're going to see is this hybrid. And I think what we really see is if one model works for company A, it may not work for company B. So I think the key to a lot of this, and I think we'll hit this on this slide in the future, is flexibility. And I think we've got to understand where all of these elements come to play. But I think this slide really shows you Post-pandemic, you've got a whole bunch of challenges to, to, to sort of overcome, and you've got a whole bunch of things to outfit your uh, your employees with. And I think that's one of the great things about Poly and our, 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 our partners at Poly is they've got this breadth of portfolio that goes all the way from that home office all the way through to the to the office itself. And if, if leaders are not outfitting people with the right technology inside of the office, I think what you'll find is that they're going to be a little bit hesitant to come back. No, 100%, and uh, that's a great segue into discovering this, this current state that we're in today, right? So when we look at what this current state is, what does it mean? Firstly, I want to make it super clear. I think hybrid work, we should terminate its work. Uh, honestly, today, I don't wake up in the morning and I say to my kids, I'm going to hybrid work. I'm going to work. It's different in terms of where I am or the location of where it is, but it's still classified as work. I'm still driving an end result. I'm still keeping it productive. It's work for me. So, uh, you know, if we can lean towards the fact that this is work, then I'm more, you know, that's one win for us in terms of getting behind this. The reality of this, this whole work is to what you were saying. 
this flexibility is what's needed. This, you know, companies have to adopt a mixed working mode. And that mixed working mode is talking about how do I allow a certain population in my organization to be remote? How do I allow a certain population to have flexibility between work and office? How do I make sure that the, those that are coming back to the office or feel the need to be in the office are equipped with the right experiences? So a true fact is that this flexibility is a must have in terms of decision making, in terms of the next way forward. Um, so for us, it's critical. Yeah, and Duncan, I think one of the things we talked about the the office being a tool, and Satya said uh, uh, very very early on in the pandemic, space is the ultimate collaboration tool. And if we're looking at space as the ultimate collaboration tool, that's had 200 years to evolve as a technology. So we've had 200 years of in-person working. We're just on this idea of hybrid work and being uh, remote and in-person. And if we look at it, I think some of your stats here will say it, um, employees have adopted to that hybrid work model, not only for their work life, but also even for their home life. And, and commuting used to be a part of my daily uh, function as an employee where I worked. Now it's not always there. And if I'm just going to go back to the office to have meetings, I think we're going to see a, a little bit of uh, uh, the employee sort of saying, why am I going back to work? What is the reason that I'm actually here? And we've got to look at the tools that they're bringing in. So like I said, it's 200 years to, to find that in-person work. We're just at the beginning of this hybrid uh, uh, solution. And I think yep. flexibility will be key. And it is, it's super interesting. And some of the stats and, you know, Microsoft have done a massive amount of research in terms of what this looks like moving forward. But these two stats, again, really set out. And I look at it from a personal perspective also, right? I'm looking after my well-being, right? I know for today, I want to have a clear work-life balance, right? And that is super critical for me. You raise the challenge around what does it look like going back to the office? I think that's the biggest challenge I've seen most people say to me is like, how do I and what do I do when I'm at that office? Am I sitting at my desk doing back-to-back -back meetings? I could have done that from my home office. So I think we've got to go one step further in terms of how do we actually make it more uh, appealing? Like, let's start removing these back-to-back -back speed dating meetings for 30 minutes and give us some time to collaborate when we're back in the office. So uh, key things that kind of stand out for us as we look at this reluctance to return, there are definitely three Cs that we see. The one is that culture. Organizations have to start adopting a positive culture. And there are some stats that uh, call that out. It's the composition as well in terms of what we want to be doing and that com completeness. So how does that journey from home to office, office to home look like, right? And, and are we equipping our, our employees with the right tools to do that and to be mobile and to continue to be productive? So from a culture perspective, we're talking 46% of individuals are evaluating companies' culture before making that leap. Um, so it, it is important, right? Like, how do we do that? You know, we can't come out of the hot stick and say, you've got to get back to the office. It's not going to happen. That creates a negative culture. We've got to have an embraced culture, like be, uh, what's it, you know, almost be forthcoming in the fact that how does Jimmy want to operate? Let me hear what Jimmy wants to do. Let me be as accommodating as, as I can. Uh, but I, th you know. I think I think one of the things, Duncan, is is if we look at a corporation and we adopt this this flexible culture and we understand, okay, we're going to have some people in person and some people remote. We've got to make sure that we're giving people the tools so that when they're remote, they're not having a better experience than when they are in person. And I think a lot of the technologies that Poly and Microsoft have come up with um, and have been introduced here at uh, at Ignite just show that we want that media quality. We want everything to sort of be equal. Whether you choose to be in person or you choose to be uh, remote, you shouldn't have a lesser media experience. You shouldn't have less of an experience. But I think you you hit the nail on the head. Culture is key to, to what you wanna do as a corporation. And I think just dictating, oh, you must come back to work, is not really a, a, a great leadership style in this new way that we're defining this hybrid work style. It may work for a little while, but I think to your point, you know, over the over the uh, the last pandemic that we've had, um, you saw that great resignation for companies that weren't flexible. And I think what you're going to see is those companies that are flexible will start to retain the talent, will start to retain the people that are making a difference and being more productive, whether they're in, in person or remote. So, so I think there's a lot of opportunities for our partners out there. Um, you know, I, I I did the stat at the beginning where one in ten rooms is video enabled, but if not everybody's there. 
we've got a video enable those other nine rooms. So if you look yeah. at it, you know, 90 percent uh, uh, greenfield in opportunities to actually outfit those rooms. Now, not only those rooms, think about those customers that might want that dedicated device at their home just to make joining that Teams meeting a little bit easier so that I don't have to put the strain on my personal device. I can have a PowerPoint open here, but I can also be on a Teams meeting somewhere else. That's the kind of thing that we're looking at to make sure that we're giving everybody those opportunities. Yeah. So. Great points, uh, Jimmy. And honestly, I think when we look at things moving forward, we ourselves have also looked at things that are preventing people from going back to the office. And again, you know, every time I talk to customers and to partners about this and, you know, understanding what their strategies are, what they're going to be doing moving forward, you know, the key thing is how do we save on the commuting time, right? Um, you know, if, if anybody's like me, which is pretty crazy, I'm up early in the morning. I'm late at night and I'm working consistently right during those times, you know, across the three theaters. So we've got the APAC Americas and EMEA where I'm supporting, right? So yeah, if I'm driving in the morning, I'm losing an hour of driving into the office. I'm also losing that same time coming back where I could be productive at home. So a lot of people are asking those questions. It's like, so what's the need of getting back if I'm going to lose productivity? But the reality is that we've got to get to that point, right? Uh, because what is a problem also is that maintaining that work-life balance. Like I can't divorce things right now from work and personal life. Everything is super integrated. I used to love it driving back from the office and I could decompress. Like the entire day I would decompress or driving into the office, I could go through my to-do list and go, perfect, I've got to do this, I've got to do that and meet up. Now it's like I'm up, I've showered, I'm at my desk and I'm hitting my first meeting and I've got back-to-backs throughout the course of the day. So yeah. You know, there's a lot of <clears throat> there's a lot of things that are distracting people from going back to the office, but I think there are things that will help us in terms of making it attractive. Yeah, and commuting time. Nobody enjoyed the commuting time. I mean, you know, that's one of the key things of coming back to back to you know working from home is that you you do have more time. But like you said, even the commuting time was was a, a, a mental stress where I could decompress from the uh, the the work that I had just done. And now I'm going home and I can have that transition time in between those. You know, when, you, when you're coming and you're working from home, that decompression time now comes from the walk from your office, maybe to the kitchen. And it's just not as much. Um, there are things to consider. There's a whole bunch of different things. And, and and I don't think that anybody should be painting, this is better than working from home. This is better than working in the office. I think there is a mix. And I think, you know, like we, we talked about, the next 200 years is probably going to define how this works. So I think we've got a whole bunch of time to sort of redefine how this works, where we have already defined how the in-person experience works. But I think there's a whole bunch of challenges here ahead for us. Yeah, 100%. <clears throat> and I think for us, this is where we want to come in and go like, hey, we don't have the silver bullet. We've got some creative thinking around how we do this. This is not us saying to the audience, like, go and follow these steps. But I think if you use the framework that we're going to share over the next couple of slides, it will give you some uh, some thinking process as to what does that next phase look like and how do we engage that, right? So uh, initially, I call it the, the stage one, the facilitation phase. And you saw early on, we were talking about the, the post-pandemic and that advisory, you know, uh, requirement started elevating itself out. The TI study from Forrester, which Microsoft was doing or did do, uh, talks about 24% year-on-year growth in the advisory workshops, right? And I am a firm believer that workshops help pave the strategy moving forward. You know, if we uh, if we if we jump into this without any planning, it's going to be a tough road, right? But if we can just facilitate some of that thinking motion, understand firstly from the CEO level back down, like. What, is, what are their priorities? What do they want to get? What's the business objectives? And then do the similar thing with regards to the employees and bring technology. And because I'm, again, it's a, it's a three-legged stool here. We've got technology, we've got spaces, and we've got people. We can never forget those three. And those and, three is what's going to help us. 
And I think the studies that Microsoft has done has really sort of taken that and looked at it and not said, this is the way that it's going to be. But I think it's sort of what we do here. What we're doing here in this, this session right now is sort of bringing out those philosophies, bringing out those ideas and saying, you can work with this. We're not saying that this needs to be done, but we should all think about how we actually approach this and how we're gonna bring this technology and merge it back into the real world and what is the new work. You started off the session, hybrid work is work. And we all have to agree that this is the way that we're going to work and look at the way that we actually facilitate that in the future. Yep, spot on. So one of the things that we've done well, and I'm super excited, so Poly does this phenomenal well, it's an open invite for all organizations to take advantage of. But people is first, that's our first and our main asset for any organization to, to care about. So when we talk about people being first, Polly's got the persona research that we've done. We've done this for many years, and uh, you know the persona research truly looks at that individual, and you get a clear point of view of what that individual's tools are that they need to be using. You understand the spaces that they're in. So whether you're a road warrior, whether you're an information worker, whether you're an admin clerk, whether you're technical or whatever it is on site, People are first, and um, we've got to define that. One of the one of the one of the best learning practices I had was, you know, way back when uh, Link was around, we did a, a massive rollout for an organization, and the device was the last thing that they wanted to focus on. Right, it was everything technology at the, in the front end. Got to the bottom of the device, and all of they said is, "Like, give us the cheapest corded headset, and we'll run with that." Lo and behold, when they rolled that out and everybody came into the office on that Monday morning and they had no desk phones and all of that kind of stuff, the amount of complaints that hit IT at that point in time because all of a sudden everybody was just given an Alice Band headset. No one took into account that, hey, maybe I want a over-the-ear Bluetooth device or maybe I just spike my hair up like I did the today with gel and last thing I want to do is just crush my hairstyle with an Alice Band headset. So... Uh, Understanding the device, understanding the way the person wants to wear it, where they want to use it, truly, truly important for us as we move into this phase in. Um, in addition, you know, spaces. And spaces. these spaces, like you said, these have evolved, right? I'm, again, I'm looking at just the meeting room spaces. We've got everything from focus to huddle to small, medium, large, executive large, <laughs> training rooms and so forth. However, we've now got hot desking. We've got desk dropping coming in. We've got brainstorming areas, collaboration areas that are near, need to be retrofitted with devices uh, and making sure that I, when I get back in the office, I'm having that experience that I need. I'm able to collaborate with the team. And if I need to get up and whiteboard something, that there is the opportunity to do that. And if there are remote participants that I that they feel they're part of that conversation. So, you know, we've got to assume that not everybody's going to be in the same room. We've got to drive meeting equality, and we've got to do that through audio and video. Uh, yeah, and the spaces are key. Um, the stat, like I said, nine out of 10 rooms have no t video technology inside of them. And Poly really has a portfolio of products that can quickly teams enable spaces. And when we talk about teams enabling spaces, we're making sure that when, when uh, uh, users go back to the office, they can bring in those remote people because we're all going back to the office, but not everybody's gonna be there at the same time, Duncan. And if not everybody's gonna be there at the same time, having a phone in the office does not cut it anymore. We need to have this video interaction. As we talk here and as we, as we have these conversations, I can see uh, nonverbal cues. I am, I am a man that speaks with my hands to emphasize what I'm speaking, whether I'm in person or I'm remote, I'm doing this. And not having that or just listening to my words, sometimes doesn't always take the same inflection. So video enabling your spaces and teams enabling your spaces are two keys if you're adopting this Teams platform. And Duncan, you know that just putting a PC inside of a room does not Teams enable a space. You want those purpose-built devices that are certified for Microsoft Teams rooms. And Polly's got a whole portfolio that can fit all the way from the Focus 
all the way up to the largest of uh, of rooms to teams enable those spaces so that when people come in, they get quality audio, they get quality video, and their meeting experiences are up to that of what they have been having for the last two years. We don't want people to go back and have lesser of an experience. So by using these certified devices from Poly, you can make sure that your spaces are outfitted appropriately. Yep, yep, yeah, and uh, Jimmy, you like me, I you cut my hands off, I won't be talking, right? Or right? I cut my hands, get on my back, I'm going to be silent, Bob. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I talk with my hands, and it is. And I, 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 every time I've had the opportunity to meet with people, whether it's at an event now or whether it's in a, a, a meeting scenario, it is. It's awesome. I can express, I can, you know, visually take take uh, account of what's happening in the room as well. So, truly, truly, you know, spaces and people are extremely critical. Tied to this is that culture, and we we hit on this early on in the in the conversation is that culture is important, but it's a fair balance between culture and business objectives. You know, if your business objectives are way too heavy, if that stick is coming out and you're driving people back into the office, you're not creating that warm, welcoming culture. Therefore, people will not come back to the office, and most likely, they will continue to look at elsewhere to move. You know, so it's a balance between how do we make this attractive for people to come in, maintaining our culture, but also maintaining the business objectives and being sure that, you know what, if people need to come back, they come back. If they don't, give them the flexibility to make those decisions themselves. Yeah, and culture is key. Having a team of people come together and actually work together, that's key to every business, every vertical, every organization that we deal with. So culture is very, very important. And by having uh, uh, those barriers of technology, let's say they go to the office and they don't know how to schedule a meeting, Duncan, or they don't know what technology to use, that's going to create or foster an environment where I don't want to be here. And that's not going to give anybody that nobody's going to reach their business objectives unless the culture is there and the technology leads them into that collaborative uh, uh, space that they want to go into. So so it's key. And it's it's like you said, there's this balancing act. So I think we're really sort of defining things and we're giving people those opportunities to sort of talk about exactly what all of this entails. Yeah, so exactly. We sum that all up. We talk remote working policies. Return to office policies being super crisp and clear. Collaboration best practices. I love that. For me, it's how do you expand these best practices into other business units within the organization, right? Again, your choice is to boil the ocean or your choice is to create a scenario that you can extend across other business units. And then, of course, just strategy development all the way through. By doing these things, you're literally looking at driving that return to office, right? So. One of the things that I am a big advocate for is please, organizations, you cannot new hire on board remotely. It loses its value completely. That is an in-person activity that truly really has to get back to in-person. You build relationships when you're on board with people physically. You create bonds, bonds that you will require a week, a month down the line when you need to reach out to someone to get some validation or some input on the report or uh, support. You know, you can't build that remotely via video. So for me, you hire onboarding training, general training, you've got to make sure you bring that back in. You know, I talk from experience, I moved during COVID from uh, from Microsoft to Poly. And yes, you know, I actually had the opportunity to just swap my badge just the other day. <laughs> you know, I've been there for three years. But that is the reality. Like, it's it's really hard. And, uh, you know, again, introducing customer and, and, and client meetings is really, really key to do that in person. Again, you build trust. Um, yeah. And then, uh, you know, to my point that I was saying earlier on, when you look at these small groups of people returning to the office, that helps drive the mentality, the mindset, right? You know, people want to pretty much learn from others. So they'll see what happens. And if Jimmy and Duncan are coming to the office, hmm, there must be something happening kind of scenario, right? And how do I start, you know, building into that? So uh, really key things that people need to take consideration moving forward as they, you know, you know, build out their strategies. So, um, you know, when we talk about enablement, again, change management, we went through that. Firstly, we went home without any change management. We had to learn on, our, on on the fly, right? We have now the opportunity to embed a change management process that welcomes people back into the office. I think, you know, for me, it's having the, the proof is always in the pudding. So create a small community. It's a low cost kind of uh, kind of concept that you can run. 
You can expand those concepts across your business units. It's got a supported business case behind it. And that helps us in terms of getting that enablement, right? Um, it's, 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 we, we can't be what we did when we went home. We can't just all go back to the office. It's not going to happen. And I think the poly sales teams really have um, a lot of uh, 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 things that they can enable customers with on that low cost solution for that dry run to make sure that they are using the right technology to make sure that they're there. I think there's a whole bunch of things that you guys uh, have as an organization that that enable um, our partners to go out and make sure that their customers have the right solution up front before they make that large investment into into everybody. So I think there's these tools out there and there's these tools. And again, these are all tools that we're talking about so that you can enable that back to work functionality without having challenges. Let's not sort of put barriers in front of people. You know, a lot of this technology has been hard in the past, Duncan. And one of the things that the pandemic helped was to make it a little bit easier and remove some of those challenge barriers. So, so if you haven't tried things, I think that the Poly Sales team really has some opportunities that they'd they'd love to speak to you about. Yeah, and yeah, we've got a lot of programs that will help and won't go into those. But yeah, it's a, just a matter of reaching out, asking for where and what we can do to help with. Absolutely. You know, so again, when we look at summarizing this up, we're talking about this enhanced experience from the time you wake up to the time you get into your car, to the time you arrive at the office, and then at your spaces that you need to be working from to the time you get back. So, you know, we've got an array of devices that will support it. You know, Jimmy's been fortunate in terms of sharing that with everybody, and I'm super excited. Things coming down the line are great. Some of the technologies that we're innovating with is, is amazing. It's going to just drive that experience to where it needs to be. So um, as we look at the final stage, it's called the enlightenment stage. Right, so we've gone from the great resignation to the great enlightenment for me. And that is looking at five core areas of enlightenment. How we actually compensate our, our, our employees. So a reward is a big thing. You look at how many people move during the great resignation purely for the value of money. Right, so are we compensating right? We've had enough time to reevaluate our, ourselves as an organization as part of those policies and those objectives. Look at the well-being of the individuals, making sure that they've got what needs to be there for them to stay healthy and excited. Uh, look at the work style. As we've talked about, flexibility is key in terms of these multiple modes of work styles. And then, of course, development. We've got to continue to develop. And we're not going to have people job hopping or doing this great resignation if all of these five areas are, are, are there and they feel welcoming for the individual to take full advantage of. So uh, this would be the last stage for me in terms of getting us back into the office. Yeah, Duncan, I think it's great, the enlightenment. I think everybody has, has sort of summed it up and work is no longer a place that I go. It's now a thing yeah. that I do. And the technology and everything that you use to surround that ability to do things really has to be the right technology or else you're gonna put barriers in front of those, those employees that they can't do this. So I think you, you said it perfectly, it's the great enlightenment, we can move forward. So Duncan, how do we go to the next steps? Yeah, and what do we do? We've listened to this for, for a while now, but what are the next steps for us? Yeah, so the next steps is I would welcome all our, our customers, our partners, you know, take advantage of our working style survey tool, right? Uh, this will give you some great insight to your organization, to the behaviors of your individuals. It will allow you to start at least building that plan moving forward, right? Um, honestly, take these three steps, as I've mentioned, I hope they will be sort of like a guiding light to thinking a little bit differently. You've got to find that balance between culture and business objectives. You've got to adopt a flexible working mode for your employees and make sure culture is definitely there that is attractive for people that want to come work with you. Thanks, Duncan. I, I hope that everybody's having a great ignite. Thank you, Duncan and, and Polly for the wonderful partnership. Thank you for having me on for this, this yep. in, incredible conversation that we had, just opening up those ideas for everybody. I think it's it's been really, really enlightening. And I think I think a lot of people have a lot of things to think about. And I think that, that Polly and Microsoft can really help them with their uh, their move forward. Totally agree. And Jimmy, again, I'm super grateful you were able to join. I love these conversations we have. We've got the same mindset behind this. And uh, yeah, if we can help our partners and our customers get to where they need to be, we've uh, we've been successful. Success. Check. <laughs>